Hello, welcome to my channel. So in this video, we are going to see this dynamic animations in Maya. So we will use some of the dynamic constraints and we will create this kind of animation. So this is a basic model which I have done. So I didn't apply any kind of dynamics to this thing. It's a just basic model and make sure you have to delete all the history of this thing and also make like freeze transformation. So if you want to delete the history, you can select all the objects. You can go to edit, delete all type by history and also like modify freeze transformations. So this is what I have done before. Like now we will see uh, how we'll apply this dynamic animations to this thing. So what is the concept is like this thing has to throw the ball into the air here. So now we will apply some of the dynamic constraints. So now whenever we click play, so nothing will happen. So we will apply the rigid body, like uh, active rigid body to this, all the four objects here. And also just I will uh, keep this animation in real time. So we need to click on this and just we need to select this 24 frames per second. And now first step is like we need to select all those objects. Here we can go to this fields on solvers and we have to select this option like cre create active rigid body. So select this and if you play nothing will happen because we need a gravity for this thing. So by selecting all these things we will add a gravity. So in order to add the gravity we can go to the fields and solvers. We can select this gravity. So now whenever we click on this play, so now this is going to be fall down and we need to add the passive collision for this ground. So by selecting this ground, we can go to fields and solver and just select this option like create passive rigid body. So now we will click on this play and now see it has been fall down. And now other thing is I want to create the hinge so that uh, this will make an animation by using this point here. So in order to create the hinge, uh, we can select this one of the object and now we can go to like end constraints and now we can go to this fields and solver and here you can see there is an option like create hinge constraint so we need to select this thing and now defaultly it has been created the hinge uh, in the center of this object so now whenever we click on this play so see now it is going to create the animation based on this point here so we need to change the positions of this point uh, so we'll go to the side view and we can select that hinge and we can place over here. And now if you click on this place, see now it is going to fall down based on this position. So we need to apply the same hinge for this thing. So select this. So now whenever we click on this play, so now it is going to fall down. Now what the thing is we need some force so that it will push towards this direction here towards the X minus X direction. So in order to do that, just we can select this and now we can go to the fields and solvers. Here we can apply this create spring constraint. So select this thing. And what the thing is now whenever we click on this play, so see it is trying to push this thing, but we need some more force. So what I will do is just I will place this spring constraint towards this direction. And now we will select this. See, now it is going to push this towards the minus X direction. It depends on the position where you have like placed this thing. So we need to increase this number of frames. Let's say I will like give the value to like thousand. And now we'll click on this play. So see, now the ball is going to fall down. And same thing I will apply for this. So select this. And uh, like whenever we click on this play, so see. So now we need to add more strength so that it will be more fast. Uh, so in order to add the strength, like we can select this spring constraint. And here you can see in the channel box. So we can use this spring stiffness. Uh, so like we can increase the value. Let's say we'll give the value to like 20 or something. So just if I click on this play, so see now we got more force. So like same thing, uh, we can give 20 for this thing now. Now it's pushing towards the ground. So here yeah, the animation is okay. But what the thing is the balls are falling onto the ground directly. So I want this ball should go like it, it has to have the more air direction. So we need to create a collision object. So I will go to the like side view. And here just I will create an of, any one of these collision objects. So and just I will scale it properly. So it depends. Uh, so let's say we will place over here. And for this, we need to add a passive rigid body. So we will go to the fields and solvers and go to this like uh, passive rigid body. So now we'll see this thing. So like, so see now we got more air time for this balls here. 
and it depends on your situations like how much distance the ball has to travel so according to that you need to place this object over here so suppose if you place over here click on this play so now see we got this thing but uh, we need to increase the strength but that's fine so like i will place over here and just click on this play and depends like if you want you can increase the strength of this thing so just i can give the value to like 30 or something like in this way so now this is okay so next what the thing is i want to attach the cloud to this ball so like there is one scene in bahubali movie it's a like tollywood movie so there will be one war scene in that movie so like what the thing is the cloth will be attached to these two balls and it will go on to the air and in the middle of the air uh, like there will be some sort of like fire animation so we can do that kind of uh, scene here so what the thing is just i will create a cloth for this thing so just i will take a plane and i will go to the top view let's say i will just select this in this way and I will place over this thing. So place it properly. And now what the thing is for cloth, we need to like increase the number of subdivisions. So select this and increase the number of subdivisions. So what I will do is just, I will give the cloth constraint for this thing, like cloth property. So in effect, we can go to this end cloth and click on this create end cloth. So after clicking on this see now the cloth is going to fall down. And now what the thing is, I want this cloth should be attached to this ball. So in order to do that, we can select this vertex of this cloth. And after that, we need to shift select this ball. And now what the thing is, whenever we create, whenever we make an animation, the cloth will follow this ball here. So in order to do that, first we need to select the vertex and select the ball. And after that, we need to go to this end constraints. And there is an option called like point to surface which means like this vertex is going to attach to this ball. So we need to select this point to surface. So now this vertex has been attached to this ball. So now we'll click on this play. So see, now the cloth is going to follow these balls. Let's see, we got this nice animation. So this is one of the scene in uh, Bahubali. So now we'll uh, play this thing. So see now the cloth is following these balls. So this is cool animation. And suppose in case if you want to add the fire, we can add the default fire effect for this thing. So we can select and we can go to like effects. So here we can see there is an option like effects and there is an option like fire. So if you select this fire now, at the beginning, like the fire is going to start. What I want is like the fire has to start in the middle of this animation so what i can do is i can select this fire so first we need to select this fire here so like uh here you can see there is an option like start frame so we'll decide like uh, let's say i want to start here okay so in the 77th frame so just i will select this and i will type like 77 the fire is going to start at the 78th frame so in this way, we can use this dynamic constraints and we can create this kind of animation. Hope you like this tutorial. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.